Hey, we're back and we're talking through this year's Iron Biz competition and I'm giving you some of my secrets and advice for how you can get to that stage in Vegas. So this, in this video, we're gonna talk about the feeder competition, how you can make the most of your entry to get you that best, that best opportunity to get to Vegas. So if you come to Tableau's website, you will see the theme for this year's qualifier is games. They give you examples of tabletop video games, esports, party games, all kinds of sort of things. So lots of different options around games. If you're not sure whether your game meets the criteria, you can always email Tableau. So if you're unsure if your visualization meets that criteria, do email Tableau here, just to double check that your work uh, will be included for the feeder. So games is a big part of what I do in the community. I help set up a community project called Games Night Viz uh, with Lewis and Tina from the community where we share all kinds of games related data sets, uh, share different visualizations people have put together all on the subject of games. So loads of different things that can help you along the way. So on here we have a data archive. This is all the data sets we've curated as part of this project. So you'll find lists of different games down here. So we've got board games, card games, Call of Duty, different different types of games. Lots of Mario, Pokemon, big fan of Pokemon here. So lots of stuff for you to get started with there in terms of finding a data visualize, uh, a data set for your visualization. So many different challenge themes throughout the months. And from this, we get a lot of community submissions, which can be a great source of inspiration for your work. So recently we did a community project with Iron Quest about nostalgic games. So we had different members of the community submit their nostalgic games. And you can go over to Sarah's website and you can see all the recap of these visualizations to give you a bit of inspiration. You can go through this list and find all these fun games like Pac-Man, uh, Mad Libs, if you've ever played those, Candyland, Sonic, Final Fantasy, so lots of lots of different games uh, coming out here. Lots of like inspiration to find to think of a game, and is that part of inspiration that I want you to focus on for now? So when it comes to your feeder topic, these are three criteria that I really hold dear when I'm putting together data visualization projects. I really stick to something that I'm interested in, something that I'm passionate about, and something that I just find enjoyable. Uh, so these are three themes that I use a lot with my work because I feel that if it sort of ticks these boxes then I'm putting the, my best effort into this work. I'm producing my best work possible. So I'll take you through a few examples of this. So for example, in last year's competition it was about art but I actually gave them a game instead. Uh, so this was about interpreting art. So this was drawings from a Drawful Two, two, which is a Pictionary type game. So the idea is here that you would have to try and guess what you thought these pictures were. And the motivation behind this was, it was something that I just found really fun. You know, when the theme came out about arts, I was like, what am I gonna do? Uh, but I had these pictures and I thought, okay, this keeps making me laugh because some of these pictures are ridiculous. Well, what are they meant to be? And that was the question I used to say, does anyone understand what these are meant to be? It turns out they didn't, uh, which made it even more funny for me, if anything. Um, so with this visualization, I put it into a game. It became this sort of user interface so that you can submit your answers. You can see how you did. I did one, I got one, hooray. Uh, but it's not actually that bad. Uh, <laughs> so do check this one out. I have a few other examples. So for a recent community project with Data Plus Music, I put together this, my Pokemon's Yellow soundtrack. So I found on an old Game Boy, my old team from Pokemon Yellow, and I thought I would go and retell the story of that game, but putting the music in there with it. Um, so this is a visualization that uh, demonstrates all the different notes that are played throughout this game. Uh, so what I wanted to show was this was this combination of the Pokemon plus the music from the game itself. Just a bit of fun. I saw this is just fun. Like Lavender Town is the spookiest thing ever.
terrifying. Because I have a deep like investment in this topic, because I played this game and it was really part of my childhood, I have a lot of knowledge I can bring to the table here. So I can bring you a lot of different quotes, a lot of different my own insights from playing this game that other people wouldn't be able to have. I can also take you on my own personal journey because I would have picked these different Pokemon. Some of them were my more preferred choices uh, over other other types. So, and the thing about this is, I just had a lot of fun putting it together to build out this different story, which is what you really need for this competition. You need to be able to enjoy what you're doing to be able to invest the time needed to get into that final. So in this case, I'd seen the Halo user interface for Halo Master Chief Collection, and I'm like I'm blown away by how cool it looks. And I think, well, this is what I'm trying to do day to day with dashboards. So how can I try and rebuild this in Tableau? So you can see here that I'm using a lot of different things from a typical dashboard. So custom navigation buttons, custom fonts. You might also notice this subtle change going on with the background, which is more obvious in this case. So here I'm using YouTube videos as a background to my visualization because that's what they had in the game. It's probably a little bit distracting, but it's quite fun. In other cases, I thought about turning the data I was using into a game. So I had seen a visualization that talked about the lifetime expectancy of different chess pieces and thought I would try and turn it on its head, try and think of, well, what if you, the reader, were one of those chess pieces, how would you feel about this lifetime expectancy? It's a bit, a bit of a game. So I pose this situation here about a chess commando grandmaster goes out and needs an army to fight um, again in their next battle. Uh, so you are going to be enrolled in this chess army, whether you like it or not. So I give you this enrollment questionnaire. This is a bit of a, like a personality questionnaire because I don't want you to pick that you're going to be a queen or a knight or a bishop or anything really powerful. And one option with this is you can just submit and you'll get one of the worst pieces in the match. Uh, so you'll be this black pawn. You'll be in the Queen's Gambit final, but on the losing team. Uh, you'll be positioned here, right via the front. Uh, I, over here, I give you some of that summary statistics about lifetime expectancy of different soldiers, and then you can go on to the match if you want to. So this kind of puts in a, a different perspective where actually that 35% means something now. It means whether you're, how well, how do you feel about whether you're going to go on to live or not in this match? So we go on to the match. And alas, the day was not yours. You died at the hands of Elizabeth Harmon. Uh, over here, I give you a breakdown of what happened during the match, who died, what soldiers on each side. I also give you a little timeline of the chess, chess match. Uh, so yes, yes, you did. You did achieve something. You took a white pawn early on in the match. Uh, but later, you met your fate at a white, the hands of a white bishop. So sad. Alas, uh, but now we can retire to the barracks and you get to see this data visualization of the lifetime expectancy. So, But I also give you some re replayability. So you can go back, you can do different matches, different finals. Okay, so those were some visualizations from my portfolio. A lot of my interests, my passions, my enjoyment for these different games coming out in the visualization, really putting myself to that audience.